So, this morning we're going to talk about vision, but before I get there, this is term two. We are kicking off term two. Amen. Amen. Term two, so we're going to start with prayer and fasting as we do every term. We're going to start from tonight, tomorrow, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday. We will break the fast with communion on Wednesday in the home cells. So please, be involved, get connected, pray, 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 pray. You are powerless because you are prayerless. Listen, many people feel the call to pray. Many of you have felt it. You want to go pray, you know you have to go pray, and you feel like praying, and you want to go pray, but you just don't do it. Okay, so this morning I want to encourage you and say, listen, hello, it's time to go get yourself into prayer. Get into a place of prayer. Amen. Nee, dit is a baie swak amen, daai gewees. Asseblief, jylle gemeen moet encourage jy so. Amen. We will pray. Okay, so in the morning, six o'clock, I will be online with you, with me. You can join um, every morning from six to six thirty to pray with us. If you can't make it that time, then please go pray later during the day. But we're going to believe God for a shaking. Okay, we're going to believe God for a big shaking. We have already reached our highest attendance for the year, which is fantastic. But we need to break that number. We want to see this place filled with over 300 people. Okay, so a morning like this, it looks horrible. I hope it is S come, because the Lord knows that S come can your life regeer nie. Okay, you have more kracht as S come, so as a belief. So please, don't let this stupid thing rule your life, especially there at home, watching later because you are not online now because there's no power. Okay, but please, let us be on fire this this coming term. Let us reach people. We have a goal, we have a vision, we have a mission to reach people. Amen. Amen. All right, so this morning let's get into the words. Vision. Say vision. vision. Where there is no vision, people perish. Proverbs chapter 29 verse 18. Where there is no vision, people perish. It's like a flat tire. Okay? If you have a quad bike or a motorcycle or a bicycle here in the Kalahari, then you know what I'm talking about. You have to keep on fixing the tires the whole time because there's a flat tire all the time. Okay, so if you don't uh, pump up your tires, then that tire will come off eventually. There will be nothing wrong with it, but because it's not inflated, it will eventually damage, get damaged and it will go off rail. So you don't want to be a person that is not pumped up with vision. You don't want to be a person that is not full of the Holy Ghost and full of power. Okay? And to have vision, that is what vision does. Vision gives you energy. If there's no vision, there's no energy. Listen. And I can see that. I can see it with so many people. No energy, nothing. Just by the way. So please, leader, volunteer, get some oomph in your step. Okay, get something stuck in your backbone so that you can stand up straight, that you can walk up straight, that you can run. Okay, there's need no tight on run to drain till me. Okay, because people look at you and they see your passion and then that says everything. All right, so when you have vision, vision energizes you. If there's no vision, there's no energy. Okay, so the Bible says where there is no vision, people perish. What is vision? I'm glad you asked. Number one. Vision is a conceptual view of your future. It is a conceptual view of your future. Now, what does that mean? It means it's a clear picture of where you are going. It is the blueprint of your life. You know how to get there. You have a dream, and out of your dream, there is a picture of what you want to see happen. Okay, that is vision. Vision is a conceptual view of your future. Number two, the vision is a visual manifestation of your purpose. I'm going to say it again. It is a visual manifestation of your purpose. Vision gives energy. Purpose gives fulfillment. Vision gives energy. Purpose gives fulfillment. If you have no purpose, you will never feel fulfilled. You ask people, do you feel fulfilled? They say no. It's because there's no purpose. So they are being abused, which means they feel even worth less. Amen. Number three, a glimpse of the reason of your very existence. That's the third, third definition. Vision is a glimpse of the reason of your existence. I exist because of this picture. 
because of this purpose, because of what I have to achieve and I have to fulfill. Number four, don't change the sound, it was good. The perception of your divine assignment. A perception of your divine assignment. Okay? So you know that God has called you. How do you know it? Because He gave you a dream. And we'll talk about how do I know if my dream is from God or if my dream is not from God. We'll get there because that will shock you. Okay? No you left for my sure. The conception of your preferred future. So it is the conception or the perception of your design assignment, your, how you perceive what you are supposed to do in life, and then it is the conception of your preferred future. What kind of a future do you want? Your vision will give you a picture of that. Your vision will show you the future that you are heading to. Because everybody is heading somewhere. Most people just don't know where they're going. That's why they perish. Because they just live this life like a dog and they don't have purpose. Well, a dog even have purpose. But the dog doesn't have vision. Only vision that he has is to look for you. Some people don't even greet you. At least the dog wags his tail when he sees me. Huh? Come on, you have to have vision. Vision, vision. Say vision. Because vision give me my preferred future. The, pre the future that I want to see. The future that I want to go to. We need some vision in this country. Ay, you know, toch. Hopefully you are the person that can stand up and say the vision for South Africa. Because I find no leader in this country that has a dream or a vision. They're all just in it for themselves. Number six, the capacity to see the invisible. Vision is the capacity to see the invisible. You know what I like about capacity? Capacity means I like engines. So I know that the capacity of a V8 engine is much stronger than of a little 1100, okay? Even though they can put a turbo on it and whatever they can do it, they can blow it up as much as they want to. It just doesn't have the raw power, okay? It's got some, it's got some power, but it doesn't have that power. And with technology changing, all I always say is, if you can put the same technology power in that small engine and put it in a big engine, imagine what the big engine is going to do, okay? So, so what kind of an engine do you carry? What's your capacity, Okay, stop living a life without capacity. The one thing that you should pray is, Lord, enlarge my capacity that I will have more oomph, that I will have more power, that I will have more tenacity, that I will have more fire, that I will have more. So that's what vision does. It gives you capacity to see what nobody else can see. Vision. So the question is, what does vision do? A lot of questions today. I like the could you ask me these questions? So the first thing that vision does, I already said it, it gives you energy. No vision, no energy. You don't know where you're going. You don't know what to do. I mean, just think about it. Think about your kids on a Saturday morning. You just want to sleep a little bit late, but your kids has got some vision of doing certain things. Now, you don't do what they envisioned you to do, so then the fights start. By Saturday afternoon, everybody wants to run out of the house because everybody irritates everybody because there was no vision cost. Okay? So if you go on holiday, you have a vision. You have a plan. You have a plan of what you want to do, where you want to go, how you're going to spend the money. Otherwise, you will come back irritated, frustrated, and broke. Amen? So you have to have a vision. What's the vision of my life? What is the vision of my wife? What is the vision of my business? What is the vision? And how do I know this vision is from God? We'll get there. Vision gives energy and purpose gives fulfillment. There is no purpose without vision. If you don't know what the picture looks like, if you don't know where you're going, you don't know how to get there and then you feel purposeless. Vision captures your future. Vision captures your future. This is a very important statement. The Bible says in another translation, Proverbs 29, 18, it says, Therefore, where there is no vision, the people cast off restraint. What is restraint? Restraint means like when you are arrested. They restrain you. Put your hands behind your back. We arrest you. Okay? Now you are restrained with your movement. You are under arrest. When you have a vision, your vision will arrest you. When you have a God vision, it will arrest you. And whatever you do, you will become a slave to that vision. 
Whatever you do will be for that vision, for the purpose of that vision, to fulfill that vision. You will not spend your time with anything else. You will not be distracted. You will not spend time with other people that doesn't have the same vision. That's a big problem. Amen? So vision will restrain you. And where there is no vision, people cast off restraint, which means people start to live loose, they start to live irresponsible, they start to live wild, and they start to mess up their lives because they're out of control. That's what happens if you don't have vision. If you don't have vision, your life spins out of control, and then you end up being abused by this world and by people in this world and by things of this world. Amen? So the question is, how do I start with my vision? Another good question. Well done. You document it. Number one, you document it. If you see the vision, write it down. The Bible says, write down the vision. Habakkuk 2 verse 2. Write down the vision. Make it clear upon clay tables so that whosoever read it can run and tell others. I love that translation. Because your vision needs to be a vision of such magnitude that it influences other people. Your vision should be so strong that people, when they see it, they want to be part of it. Are you with me? He wants you to live a life clear so that when others see it, they will run with you. They want you, God wants you to live with such purpose that your purpose will get other people to run with you. When you write down the vision, when you make it plain, people will see it and they will go tell other people about your vision. That's why you should never share your vision prematurely. Make sure that you start to work on your vision. Make sure that your vision is of such a standard and whatever, if it's a business, make sure that you patented it. Make sure that you registered it. Make sure that it's yours, that it belongs to you, that nobody else can steal it. And then you go and you write the vision. Okay? And some people will read your vision like they read this one on the wall and they think, nee, die mens is mal, het gaan nooit gebeur nie. Nooit in jou leven nie, maar in my leven definitief. Because vision takes you to a place. It takes you to a place to work in a certain way. To be active in a certain way. I love what Pastor Ray McCauley always said. He said that vision causes you every day to wake up and every day to want to do something to fulfill that vision. That's purpose. So the first thing you do is you document it. You write it down so that you can read it, that others can read it, that it can motivate you, that it can remind you. You always have to come back to the drawing board. What is it that I have to do? Always come back. What is the purpose of my life? What is the purpose? Why am I doing what I'm doing? You always have to come back to that thing. And if you don't have anything, that's why your vision never comes to pass because it's written down nowhere. So write it down. It's simple. Write it down. A short pencil is always better than a long memory. Because emotion will take away your memory. Reality will take away your memory. Okay? But if it's written, it's written. That's it. Now you have to read it, and it has to come to pass. Amen? Number two, a clear plan to get you there. A clear plan to get you there. Get you where? Get you to your vision. So the first thing you do, you document it. The next thing you do is you have to get a clear plan. How am I going to get there? And that's where most people come to me and say, Pastor, pray for me. I need money because money will make my vision come true. No, I disagree. Your vision will enable you to raise finances. Because if you are convinced, people will see it. And if you are convinced about what you do, people will look at you and they will contribute to it. But if you're not convinced, it doesn't help you begging for money because nobody is going to be convinced. You cannot sell something if you don't believe in it. That's how it is. If you go into marketing, you better believe it. You better believe what you're selling, that it's worth it. If you don't believe it, it ain't going to happen. Amen? Because nobody buys something that you don't promise and that you don't believe in. People look for integrity. So create a plan. Create a plan that you know exactly this is what I want to do. This is how I'm going to get there. Your vision dictates your plan. Okay? Many are the plans of a man's heart, but the Lord will guide his step. Your vision will dictate to you where you are going. 
who you spend time with, what you are reading. Your vision will determine what you do with your precious, valuable time. Number three, your vision determines who you associate with. You don't spend time with useless, no dreamers people. You spend time with people that will encourage you, people that will draw you, people that will take you somewhere. I always say this. Somebody asked me once, they said, well, pastor, I'm going to get about a million rand. They were in an accident and then the uh, third party paid out a million rand and they said to me, pastor, what must I do with this million rand? I said, that depends on you, what you want to do. First thing I always say is tithe on it because it's money you didn't have. Now you're increasing. So 10% belongs to the Lord. So give your tithe. That's it. Okay, and then with the rest of the money, what do I do? The rest of the money, well, what is your plan? Well, one of my friends said, I said, you're making a mistake. You don't listen to your friends. Is your friend a millionaire? No, he's not. Okay, so why do you ask him for advice if he doesn't have a million rand, at least? Well, pastor, you know he's my friend. No, he's going to help you to spend that money. He's not going to help you to advise you because he's never had it. And there's a reason for it. Amen. So where do I go, pastor? Go find somebody that has enough money that they don't benefit from your million. Now, who's that? Well, you're going to have to find some people. You're going to have to go to some people that are high up, difficult to reach, people that you don't find easily, people that you're going to have to pursue a lot, people that you're really going to have to spend time to get to them. Because when you get easy to people, it's easy to get familiar with them and easy for you not to listen to what they say because you don't value them. Because it's free. No, it must cost you something. Otherwise, it's not worth it. So they, I say to them, then find somebody that is rich. Find a billionaire. Find a millionaire. Somebody that he doesn't want your million. Because if somebody has two million, they want your million. If they've got 10 million, they still think about your million. But if they've got 100 million, your million means nothing. It's, it's, it's interest. Okay? Interest in the bank, not interest in them. They're not interested in it. Okay? So, and that's what you do. When you have a dream, where do you go with your dream? To somebody that has already achieved it. That's what I love about Pastor Art. He goes to Pastor Tommy Barnett. He goes to Pastor Rick Godwin. He goes to people that are way behind him in years. And then he goes studied what they did, and now he came and he did the same. Now, our pastor is at the level that other people have to come and study what he's doing. Okay, when we talk about associates all across this world, I, every single day I get people that contact me and say, we want to associate with CRC. We want our church to become CRC. If I have to tell you how many people want their churches to be CRC, then I have to put them through a three-year process. First, I have to develop CRC in you as a pastor. Then I will develop CRC within your leaders as a pastor. And then I will take your people the third year and we will transfer everybody to CRC. But it takes time, my friend, because I first have to build it into you. You don't just get adopted and now uh, tomorrow you have my DNA. No, it takes time. But yet people want to be part of it. They want to be part of something great, something awesome, something that's changing the world. I mean, come on, people. It's not just Uppington. Yeah. Every single week I sit with people across the world. Every Wednesday when I pray, there are people from different countries around the world. It is our dream that we will see people from every country around the world that is going to pray with us on a Wednesday. Huh? We want to see people everywhere, from every country, everywhere, across the globe. You know, when, when, when I want to switch on that Zoom on a Wednesday night and I, on a Wednesday afternoon and I say, because I can't say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, because it is good morning and afternoon and evening somewhere. So I have to say hello. How are you today? Some of them almost tomorrow. How are you tomorrow? Ah, oh, here's a lot of if you understand timeline. <laughs> so, but the fact is, and there are people all across the world, every time zone around the world, in the night, in the day, in the morning, in the evening, talking about omnipresent, huh? in prayer, around the world, around the globe. Imagine, these are dreams, and we are fulfilling them. And we're going to see people all over connecting with us, and we're going to pray. Just, just from last year, April, up until now, we have seen just on that one platform, on that one platform, we have seen 400,000 people giving their lives to Jesus. Hello. And then we sit in Uppington and we think it's this small. 
I'm sitting in Uppington. You know, a prophet, bless his darling heart. A prophet one day said to me, he said, you have to, you have to go, <laughs> you have to go live in a country or in a place, in a city that is close to an airport. That's what he told me. I said, now I'm going to live in Uppington. Is there an airport? Yeah, an international one. Very expensive. And you have to fly to Joburg to fly anywhere else. Okay, but that's not it. He said, you have to stay in a big city where you're close to the airport because you're going to travel the world. You're going to minister to people all over the world. I mean, and here I'm sitting in Uppington and I um, don't even have to travel, but I speak to people all over the world. We have people all over in this vision that get saved. All over. It's a vision. It's bigger. It's much bigger. God will make a way. I've never seen a tree run to you with its fruit and say, eat my fruit, eat my fruit. I've never seen a tree. I haven't seen an apple tree run into this building and come and say, eat my apple. Never seen. You have to go to the tree. If you don't go after the fruit. So it doesn't matter where you are. But if you have vision and you are full of purpose, you will bear fruit. And people will run after the fruit. They will find you wherever you are. Work on yourself. Become better at what you do. Expose yourself to the right people. Amen. So clear plan for your vision. A clear plan for your vision. Your vision dictates your plan. Number three, your vision determines who you associate with. That's what I've spoken about just now. Number four, what you read, what you listen to, and who you talk to, or what you talk about. That is how you build your vision. Be careful what you read, because you are what you read. Well, I don't read. Well, no wonder. There's nothing going on. It's, you know what the shocking thing is? That matriculants, matriculants in our country can't read. I don't know, I don't know what's going on here. I mean, my kids are reading. I told them, they've got a passion to read. I don't have to tell them to read. They've got a passion. They want to know. They, they, they're hungry for knowledge. Now, if you're not hungry for knowledge and you're not reading, and if you've got dyslexia or whatever, dyslexia, or, then just get um, speechify where you can take a picture and it reads it for you. Just do something where you can read to get your life better. But don't be one of those people that you are so full of your own ideas, but you don't want to listen to anybody. You're not willing to sit down and read and study. Information is king. You get information, then information causes you to have knowledge because you meditate on it. Knowledge causes you to have understanding because you meditate on it. Once you have understanding, you have wisdom and you can apply knowledge effectively. But if there's no information, there's nothing. What you read, what are you reading? Because you become what you read, you become what you listen to. I klom wereldse gaan mors my siek en dan wil jy self moord liggen, kom vertel jy vir my. O, ek weet nie wat met my oog gaan nie. Shut up your music, man. Gooi weg, jy gaan mors. I can't listen to this world stuff anymore. It, just my whole spirit just goes upside down. It just goes, it's like, OFMS doesn't even stay on three minutes in my car, then it's switched off. I can't listen to this stuff anymore because all the nonsense. Yeah, but I like the beat, Pastor. Yeah, and while you like the beat, somebody is polluting your subconscious with words. Manier, ons weet beter. Let's see where you are a few years from now when you want to chew off your own wrist. Bye, Stalisa. Eargate. I get what you read, what you see, what you get. Yeah, this is vision, vision, vision. Vision, what am I looking at? Because I want to see my vision come to pass. So if I look at something that doesn't amplify the vision that God has for me, then what am I looking at? It's not worth it. Okay? And will you talk, about, talk to and talk about? What are you talking about? Okay, when, when I am amongst people, I always want to talk purpose. I can't talk about nothing that doesn't carry purpose. <laughs> so after we spoke about the rugby for now, uh, uh, an hour, how many people got saved? No one. Okay, so what purpose is in it? Okay, I, I understand you like your sports. I do also like sports. I know you want to spend your time with recreation and all of that, and I get it. 
and it's a world where you can reach people. But then there better be more purpose than just talking about the rugby ball. There better be some purpose connected to it. Okay, so now that we spoke about the rugby, how are you doing, my brother? Are you still okay? Because that's what, it's a door that opens up the way to you, for you, to get to people. It's shocking how many people through a survey in this church doesn't have relationships out of, outside of this church. That's skokant. All you do is spend time with the Christians. My light, your light, 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 light. You will all have light, 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 light. The light must go into the darkness, my brother. The light must go into the darkness, my sister. Oh, please pray for me. I can't handle it in this place anymore. Everybody's unsafe. I pray that you stay. I pray that Jesus protect you and not take you out of this world, but keep you in this world because you're not of this world. So stop complaining about the world. You're there to make the difference. And pray, Lord, take me out of it. No, Lord, let me shine brighter. Let them persecute me. And more persecution, the brighter I shine. The bigger I am, the stronger I get. Oh, come on, someone. So there's the question. How do I know that my vision is from God? How do I know? How do I know that this vision is from God? Well, do you, are you ready for this? It doesn't sound like it. Not convincing. When your vision is others centered and kingdom centered, it is from God. If your vision is self centered, it's not vision, it's ambition. So you either live with vision or you live with ambition. And usually it's selfish ambition. So to have a vision of a bigger car and a bigger house, and everything that benefits you is not from God. It's still a vision, but it's a selfish ambition vision, because it's all about you. And God did not come just to give you a great life. God came with a purpose to save the world. God came and He said, now let us go. Go into all the world. Not just live in your own world. Go into the world. Make a difference in the world. So some of you just shut down there when I said that. All I wanted is just a better life for me. No, 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 no. Life is more than just you. Jesus died for you, but he died for a purpose. He died for you so that he can get his word through you. God died for you so that he can get you saved, that your life has a purpose to change other people's lives. Why do you serve a Savior if you're not prepared to save other people? Why do you live a life that is just centered on yourself? Okay? So it's good to have a vision. It's good to have a vision of your house and your car and whatever else. But then I read what Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 says. First seek the kingdom of God and all His righteousness and then all these things will be added. I've never looked for a farm. The farm came looking for me. I never looked for a house. The house came looking for me. I never went to look for the car. As a matter of fact, the car that I've always been wanting to drive ever since I was 14, I still don't have it. Because it's selfish. Ambition. For me, how many people are going to get saved because I'm driving that car? No one. Jammer man. Let ek nou so reg, ek moet wees vandag. It's the truth. Ambition or vision? What is it? Am I going to live my life with ambition or am I going to live my life with vision? Vision is much more. Vision is about healing others, benefiting others, changing others' lives. Because purpose and fulfillment is through you, not to you. Purpose is never about me achieving what I wanted to. Because I promise you, you will buy that car, you will drive that car, and then you will feel empty. Those of you that has lived long enough and that had a lot of money will know exactly what I'm talking about. That's why rich people, they have everything. And while they have everything, they mess up their families, their marriages, their children, because they have everything. And it's like they are empty. So they keep themselves busy with nonsense, with everything that they should not keep themselves busy with. And then everything starts to fall apart. And you go talk to people that are rich. I still want to know what rich is. Okay, because I hear that we are rich pastors. Now what, what is that?
Wat is dit? Wat is dit? Nee, dit is die waarheid. You have to get that piano back because the silence gets overwhelming. When the penny drops, huh? Amen. So what is it? It's not about the stuff, the stuff, the stuff. But when you have purpose, the stuff will come. It's what God said. It's not what I said. Do I have a problem with pastors having big things? No. Because their purpose is not that. It's not that. That's why they have it. It's the ones who want that that never has it. <laughs> and that's what, something that we have to do in our life. What is it that I want to do? Do I want God's purpose and God's vision for my life? Or I, do I just want mine? Because as long as I'm stuck with mine, there will be nothing. But as long as I look at God and want what He wants and do what He w- needs me to do and to change and to touch what He wants me to t- change and touch, then it starts to flow through me. Amen? So, it benefits others. It heals others. It fulfills others' lives. It makes a difference in other people's lives. That's a vision from God. That's why we are part of this vision. Because CRC, the vision, is a vision from God. It's a vision to impact our nation. It's a vision that God has birthed in that time, 1987 already, 1994, one church, many locations. Why? Because we wanted to see our country filled with hope. Now we are in the position where our pastor stands up every Sunday and he can give hope. And he's one of the leaders that it doesn't matter how they try to shut him up, they can't. Because God knew that we need CRC in South Africa now. And we have to build. And we have to build. We don't look at other denominations. God moves the way God moves. It's like Pastor Art said. We thank God that His hand is upon our movement. Okay? And it's not a movement because then it ends. It's a move. Because it keeps going. So we thank God that His hand is on this move. Because when His hand is on the move, then we have to operate. But then many other movements has had His hand on them, but then something stopped. Because people lost vision. It became self-important. Selfish ambition. You see, this was my problem that I have with a lot of the American preachers. And I'm not saying all of them are like that, but many of them. That everything is about bless me, bless me. If I do this, I will be blessed. If I do that, I will be blessed. Everything is focusing on me, 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 me. That's why I can't listen to it anymore. Because how many worlds, lives, people have been changed in this world? What purpose is there? Or is it just bless me until I go to heaven, bless my children until they go to heaven, and bless their children until they go to heaven? No, it's much more than that. It's to you, through you. Your business, if your business is vision, if part of your business's vision is not to enhance the kingdom, your business will not make it. It will fail. Even if it is like the grass, one day big, the next day it will be gone. <laughs> Nothing. We've seen too many businesses like that. It's there the one day, the next day it's gone. Why? Because everything is focused on me, 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 myself. Don't let your life just be about you. Don't let your vision just be about you. Be part of God's vision. What is God's vision for your life? So the first place, the first thing you do is you serve the vision that God has planted you into. And when you serve that vision, God will make your vision clearer. And He will speak to you. Because you serve something. And then it becomes. Amen? I know you didn't want to hear that. Nou gaan bid nou maar en repent en dan beweeg jy aan. That's how it is. Jesus, it's all about you. It's amazing. We sing that song. It's all about you. I'm coming back to the heart of worship where it's all about you. All about, and then we lie. I'm coming back to the heart of worship because I want to twist your arm because it's all about me, all about me, all about me. Yeah, man. So when you have a vision, it's bigger than you. If you have a vision, it's bigger than you. That's God's vision. You can have another vision. That's fine. But that's ambition. Don't call it a vision. So what is your ambition? I hope you have some. Good ambition. Uh, Ambition to have a great wife. Ambition to have a nice life. But I hope you get some vision that will take you beyond you. That will take you to a place where it is more difficult. A place where you cannot be comfortable. A place where you have to believe God, where you have to trust God, where you have to walk on the water, where you have to go beyond, because there's nothing exciting on being safe. There is only excitement, ask any man, 
excitement where there's danger. The closer you live to the edge of death, the more exhilarating, the more fun it gets. The more energy comes. Amen? That's why you buy that motorbike. Export me your vase. No, say that. Okay, so. Vision makes you its slave. When you have a proper vision from God, you become a slave to it. You become a slave to vision. You know, this vision that I believe in, that God has called me for, yeah, in Uppington, and doing the rest of what I do, it causes me to be a slave to this vision. Sundays, I don't get up and do what I want to do. I do what the vision requires me to do. Saturdays, I don't spend time with my family like every other family does the whole day, and Saturday nights, movies, and like many people do. No, I separate myself for the sake of the vision. I come and I slave to the vision. I am a slave to the vision, and not a slave that feels that I, that I have to work hard and I feel unappreciated. No, there's fulfillment in it. There's excitement in it. So I'm excited to slave. I'm excited to preach. This morning, it has been the longest 20 minutes to wait to get on the stage. I was sitting there, it's like, can I turn it for by? Can I the stage? Can come, man. Because I want to preach and I want to talk to the people because I need to encourage you because I know the word will give you life and change your life. And I know the word will enhance you and take you somewhere. It will challenge you. Because I'm a slave to it, and I love it. People think sometimes when you get on the plane and you fly there and there and there, it looks so wonderful. Okay, get on that plane and fly, and you get on the other side, and yeah, people, sometimes people don't get it. Because you've never done it, you don't understand it. Sometimes it's the worst thing to do, to get on a plane and fly for hours and hours and hours, get off on the other side, then you have to go minister to people. You're tired, you get in the bed, you try to sleep, you can't sleep because you're in a different place, a different time zone, everything. Your head is pounding, everything is crazy. Then you get out there, you spend time with people, you get back on the, just to come back home and just have to sleep for three days to just get sane again. And people think it is, ooh, look at that. <laughs> In the beginning, I also thought so, until I realized I'm a slave to this. I'm not, I'm not, this is not, this is not fun. It's bringing fulfillment. It's exciting to see people's lives saved and people's lives changed. But the journey, all the stuff that you have to go through, ach, nee man, please. That's why we want teleportation. Hallelujah. Believe Jesus, take me from here to there just in a moment. Then it's going to be fun. Amen. So, true vision will enslave you. If you have a true vision from God, you will slave like a slave every day. You will work it, you will work it, you will work it, and you will be excited to work it. You will have purpose to work it. You will move mountains to get it done because you see what God has called you to do. Oh, come on, CRC Uppington. We have a dream in this place. We have a vision in Uppington. I did not come here to suffer. I did not come here to sit here with a small church. I did not come here with a poverty mentality and to struggle, struggle, struggle along the lay of the day and the way. No, I have a dream. A tree, a true dream will make you a true leader. A true vision will make you a true leader. That's why I say I don't hear the people. I hear a man in America that changed his world. Why? And a man in South Africa that changed his world. Why? Because they used to utter these words. I have a dream. I have a dream. And they would say, I have a dream. Like Martin Luther King, he said, I have a dream to see little white girls and black, girl, black boys walking together in the street with, no, with harmony and no, no quarrel and fighting. No hatred amongst them. I have a dream. And he used to speak his dream and shout his dream. I saw a Nelson Mandela that said, I have a dream of a rainbow nation. And he didn't have a rainbow where he all different things, thank you. Gee. In any case. So what is the dream? I don't hear our politicians shouting a dream. I don't hear them. Which means I don't want them to lead me. But if somebody stands up and says, I have a dream for South Africa, I can hear my pastor there. I have a dream that we can work in harmony. I have a dream that this will be a prosperous land. I have a dream that we will see that the, the Europe and America will not benefit from this country, but that we will be self-sustaining. I have a dream that there will be no poverty in this nation. I have a dream that by 2030, 2030 people will be out of poverty. It will be eradicated. I hear somebody with a dream. And if you have a dream and a vision, then you can accomplish it. Because every day you will work towards it. 
Because it gives you power, it gives you purpose, it gives you fire, man. Come on, Uppington, what is our dream here in CRC Uppington? This is not just a stepping stone. I did not come to Uppington just to come and survive and just to be a pastor of a small church. No, I did not come here for that. I was in Hawaii when God called me here, and I had a choice to stay in Hawaii. If I wanted to live a life like that, I could have been snorkeling in Hawaii still today, and I could have had a wonderful life in Hawaii, training thousands of students about evangelism. But the Lord said, Nia, Uppington, Uppington, but senior Jock, I see a place that God will build in this city. I see a beautiful building that nobody has ever seen. I have a dream to see the people of Uppington being empowered. I have a dream to see people raising up. I have a dream to see the people next to this river, that they have a purpose and that they have a life. I have a dream to see that all, all crime will be eradicated out of this city. I have a dream to see a Bible school with thousands of students coming to Uppington. I have a dream to see three big trucks that go into Africa that preach the gospel, each with his own evangelist. I have a dream to see that every city in this province will have a CRC in it. I have a dream and I will see it come to pass because it's not my dream. It's God's dream. That's the vision. And the vision will pull towards it. We will build that building. I don't care how long it takes. Maar die Heere weet, ek gaan nie eers 50 word voordat ek begin nie. We have to build that building. That building will be, that will be our basis. That will be our base, our strong base. That will be the base. It's not the end. People think I want to build that building and then retire. Ach nie, asjeblief. Heerlijkheid. I don't even feel like I've started yet. When the building stands, then we start. Then we are out of the starting blocks. Then we can start to do what we want to do. Then we can change the place. Up until then, we are not doing anything, man. So let's get the job done. Write down the vision. The vision is to build the building. And once the building is there, we're going to do Bible school training. We're going to do evangelism training. We're going to raise up people. We're going to build schools. We're going to change the world. We're going to have the most amazing youth center. I mean, when I came here, I saw a youth center. Why? Because most of our kids in this whole city is youth. Did you know that two-thirds of our city is youth? Did you know it? So why are we not building it? That's the dream. We're going to build it. We're going to do this. Come on, CRC. But if we're going to keep on focusing on ourselves the whole time. Ek, meine, ek, meine, ach nie. That's why we're not going to build anything. If everything is just ambition, ambition, ambition. No, it has to become vision. It has to become a dream. Write it down. Make it plain. You will see. The moment that we put in the first tractor on that land, you will see how many people will start to just gather. Business people, everybody, because they will all be moved by vision. People are moved by vision. Why aren't you sharing the vision? The vision moves people. The vision. When you write the vision, when you speak the vision, it draws people. They see it. They want it. They want to be part of it. But if there's no vision being shared, there's no purpose for doing it. Why do I have to give money? I don't see the purpose of it. <laughs> Excuse me. We're going to build that building. They say, Hoekom wil jy nou so groot kerk gebouw bou? Hoekom so veel miljoene? Um, why not? Well, you can give that to the poor people. Well, the poor you will have with you always. I will give them a hundred million and tomorrow they, all the money will be gone. Just go ask the president. He knows how to squander it. Here I help. Did I say that? that it's people without dreams that does that. We have a vision. We have a dream. We're going to change this city. We're going to change this province. Come on, CRC man. As a belief. So let's act like it. Let's get some fire in our back, in our step. And let's run. Let's get the job done. Let us build this thing. Let us raise up young people. Let us get some young people in the church. Let us build this church. Come on, our evening services are doing fantastic. Okay? In one month, we have already hit twice the record attendance. So I'm trusting God to break it. 200 people in the evening service. Are you working for it? What are you doing? Purposeless sitting at home on a Sunday night. When is more school? I must do work. Rarig. I know how to do work on a Sunday night. Lekker for the TV. Come on people. No really man. We have a purpose here. 
We have a vision. We have a dream. We have to get this thing done. And you're not going to shut me up. Nothing's going to shut me up. I mean, I came here for this, and I'm not going to shut up until it happens. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Whether it's with you or without you, it's going to happen. People started with me. They're not there with me anymore. But I never changed my mind. I never stopped believing. I never stopped dreaming. You're either with me or you're not. If you're not, then go live your life, selfish ambition, and enjoy it. But, yeah. Okay. I've got to wrap it up. So, vision enslaves you to a dream that you have for a better life. If I hear a politician stand up in our nation and he says, I have a dream where we can build our nation and rebuild our nation. Oh, I love those words. Where we have a dream to make our nation great again. I mean, that's a politician. That's a leader. You could hear it a few years ago in the U.S. We will make America great again. Now, that statement is a dream. It's a vision. What are we going to do with our nation, South Africa? Huh? So every department, please, every department in this church, it's time to stop sleeping. It's time to stop sitting around and thinking. It is time to get up with purpose. It's time to pray. It's time to have that vision. I want to be the best department. This band should be the best in the whole of this province. Not up and down, up and down, up and down, near. Okay? It should be the best. This church, we should serve the best. Every department, where everything should be the best. Top, top, top quality. Not just barely, just getting by, just barely. Come on, family. We should be the richest church in this town. Why are we not? Why are we not? People think we are. People say we are. But the reality is it's not. So why are we like this? Why are we not giving where it's supposed to be giving and serving where we are supposed to be serving? Because everything becomes a flat tire. No purpose. Perish, perish, perish. No. Leader. Young man, young woman. Member. Have a vision. Have this vision. Carry this vision. Walk this vision. Talk this vision. Write it down. Speak to people about this vision so that people will be drawn. When I walk to other churches, I ask them, what's your vision? And they can't tell me. Most traditional churches, go back to your old traditional church and go ask the priest or the domini or the whatever and ask them, what is Hiri Kerk's visi? And let's see what they say. Because most of them fumble over themselves. What do you now? Do you know for me to say, visi betekent om my oor oop te hee? Nou, wat sien jy? Nee, ek sien, ek sien, baie probleme. Ok. Good for you. I don't. Huh? Come on, family. Come on, family. I hope I stirred you this morning. I hope I challenged you this morning. I hope you go back home and you go think about your vision. Is it benefiting God's kingdom? Is it benefiting other people? Is this making a difference? Or is it just to make you look important? Because if that's the case, sorry, you're going to be alone. And it's not going to happen. You're going to struggle, struggle, struggle along. Okay? Please, let your vision be bigger than just you and your four children. Or two children. Nowadays, two children. Huh? Us four and no more. Yes, I believe. Let's live beyond ourselves. Beyond our comfort. Beyond. In Jesus' name. Amen? Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word. Thank you for challenging us. Like you've challenged me in the last two weeks. That we will go bigger, better, stronger, wider, higher. With the fire of the Holy Ghost on the inside. We have you as our partner. We can do anything. We can make big plans and we can dream big dreams. Because it's yours. It's not ours. And Father, thank you that we will see breakthrough in every area of this church. Financially and in membership and in servanthood. The attitude to be right that we will build this vision, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus. While every head is bowed, every eye closed. You've come to this place. And you know that your life is not right with God. I'm not going to make this a long thing. I don't need to convince you to give your life to Jesus. You know whether you belong to Jesus or not. And this morning, I'm going to give you an opportunity to give your life to Jesus. Why? Because I love you. And I'm glad you came this morning. I'm glad you are here. Even though I challenge you. But it is for you to live a better life. A bigger life. We cannot just be average. We have to be extraordinary. So please, this morning, you came to this place. Your life is not right with God. Maybe once you did give your life to Jesus, but now you have backslidden. I ask you, please come back. Come back to the purpose of all of this. 
Come back to the vision. This morning, all over this place, while every head is bowed, every eye closed. That's you. You say, Pastor, my life is not right with God. Then I want to pray for you this morning. So please, right there where you are, forget about the person next to you. This is between you and God. And I would love to pray with you. So please, if that's you, you know I'm talking to you. I want you to lift up your hand and say, Pastor, here I am. Please pray for me. Come on all over this place. There in the other locations. Just lift up your hand quickly. Say, yes, here I am. Thank you. Anybody else? Come on. Don't put it off. Don't wait. This is the day of salvation. Come on. If that's you, quickly, lift up your hand. I don't want to convince you. I don't want to beg you. But I want to see you saved this morning. So if you haven't raised your hand yet, you know your life is not right with God. You want to give your life to Jesus. Quickly lift up your hand right there where you are. Right now, right now. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Come on. Come on. Don't wait. Respond. Respond. God doesn't going to, it's not going to strong arm you. It's your surrender. It's a miracle. The fact that you surrender yourself to God. Don't be a knucklehead, please. Respond. Surrender. God's not mad at you. He loves you. He loves you. One last time. If you haven't raised your hand, there's a wooling in your heart. Your heart klopt so. You weet what aangaan het. It's the Holy Spirit that is knocking on the door. And he says, Kom hier so, kom hier so, kom hier so. Ek hee jou hart vir my. So listen to him, please, this morning. Quickly, lift up your hand if that's you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Once you raise your hand, you can put it down. Please listen to me. Everybody look at me. If you raise your hand or you did not raise your hand, this is the call of salvation. You need to respond. You need to come and respond. The Bible says, confess me before people and I will confess you before the Father. Deny me before people and I have to deny you before my Father. So this morning, you made, the, made up your mind or you're still making up your mind to give your life to Jesus. So I'm going to ask you, please, to respond. If that's you, you raised your hand, you did not raise your hand, but you want to give your life to Jesus. In a moment, we're going to stand up, we're going to sing a song, and we're going to ask you to come to the front. So please take your personal belongings and then come. Family, reach out to people around you now. Come on. This is our purpose, is to get people saved. So let's reach out to people, bring them if they need to come. So all over this place, and they say, Pastor, I was that person that you spoke to. It, it happens many times. <laughs> you don't even know how many times it happens. Don't ever... Just because people are watching you, feel like you're not worth it. Jesus died for you. He died for you. He looked at you and He died for you because He loves you. He's not ashamed of you. So whatever other people think when you move or when you go for Jesus, don't let their opinions hold you back. The Bible says, I even I am he that blotteth out your transgressions for my own sake, and I ask you to remember me. God says, I choose to forgive your sin. Now, people out there, they don't. Okay, God chooses to forgive, but some wife of a husband doesn't. Or some husband of a wife doesn't. Actually, adult, they don't die. And God says, I forgive. Don't let people's judgment keep you away. Because ultimately, you're alone between you and Jesus. And when you're going to stand in front of God one day, it's not going to be you and your friends or you and those people with their opinions. It's going to be you and God. And that's all that matters. This moment is the same. Whatever people think of you does not matter. No matter what you've done. So, if you still want to walk, you're welcome as we're going to pray. It's such a privilege and an honor for me to be able to pray with you. I'm excited about you. I can see God has touched your heart. And I know that there's a big, 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 big plan for your life. So it doesn't matter how old or how young you are. You still have a purpose in front of you and a vision in front of you. Amen. It's my greatest privilege to pray with you. Will you please put your hand on your heart there in Achenais and the other places as well. Put your hand on your heart and pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today and I give myself to you. Thank you, Jesus, that you died for my sin, that you purchased me with your blood. Today I accept you, and I believe that you rose from the dead. I believe you are alive, and I ask you to come and live in my heart by your Holy Spirit. Lead me, guide me, and teach me in all truth that I might worship you 
and follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give Jesus praise. Every single soul matters. Every soul. Hallelujah. Amen. We're just going to take five minutes to pray for each one of you. If you don't have a Bible, we want to give you one. We want to pray for you, bless you. Nothing strange. Okay, you're like now brand new babies in the, in, in the Father's house. So we want to see you to grow up, to be strong. Okay, so we're going to love on you. Nothing weird. Amen. Please turn to your left, my right. Just follow the leaders over there in Jesus' name. Ach, kom ons klap een beetje beter handen.